Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on behalf of the Jersey City Free Public Library College and Career Readiness Department. Today we have Stephanie Benito Vasquez from Make the Road, New Jersey. And Stephanie's going to be talking about how to complete your FAFSA application. Yes, thank you. Stephanie. Thank you so much, Ashley. I will start by sharing my screen right now. One second. Awesome. So while we're getting started, um, I will just briefly introduce myself. My name is Stephanie Benito Alaskis. I am the Student Success Coordinator here at Make the Road New Jersey. Um, and right, so a little bit about Make the Road before we get started. Um, is it's a nonprofit organization that's over here in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, and what we do at the Student Success Center is that we provide college access information for students um, of all from all types of communities, right? Whether they are undocumented, um, their parents are undocumented, they're US citizens, right? Um, we provide all that information and support from them from uh, their financial aid application all the way through um, verification, college, uh, college applications, college essays, all of that under the sun, right? Um, and so for us uh, today, we're just going to be talking about how to submit more than anything, just your financial aid applications, right? Um, a large part of it will be FAFSA, but also a small part of this will also be what if you're undocumented, what if you're not eligible for FAFSA? Um, so this is me. Um, I'm the coordinator for the Student Success Center, as I mentioned. Um, and I also did want to let everyone know that if they didn't need Spanish translations, I also speak Spanish. Si alguien necesita um, uh, introducción en español, déjame saber, también hablo español. Um, feel free to also, you know, drop any questions in the chat. Um, unmute yourself at any point throughout this presentation if you have any questions. So we do have a lot to go through today, but I did just want to start with the basics, right? So financial aid is just a really, really broad conversation that has three main focuses of it. Um, one of them is grants, right? And that means it's money that you don't have to give back. That's just free money that's given to you through state or federal financial aid that students do have to apply for. Um, that is more based on your income than it is on your uh, grades, right? Scholarships is money that also you don't have to give back. That's free money that is given through private foundations or entities um, that students do have to apply for, right? So sometimes those scholarships um, are due to their um, grades, right? So if they're a straight A student, they might get more money, they might be eligible for more scholarships. Um, sometimes it has to do with what major they might be pursuing in college, right? Um, those have different requirements depending on which kind of scholarships they are. Um, and then finally, we have loans, right? So loans are really a last option for any student. Um, those do have to get paid back with interest, right? That can be a daily interest that's compounded. That can be a monthly interest that's compounded. Loans are really, really different depending on where you get them from. Sometimes they can be acquired through the federal aid, right? So through FAFSA, they also offer loans that students can easily reject. Or you can also apply for loans through banks, like Discover has really good loans for students um, and different places like that. But loans will always be a last option. Um, so again, within the grants, there are also a smaller amount of what kind of grants there are. So within the grants themselves, um, there are two types of aids. One of them is the federal aid, which everyone knows as FAFSA. Um, and that is through the website of stateaid.org, right? We'll go into the application. We'll talk about what does that mean? And that application is only for eligible citizens, right? Um, and this is kind of the tricky part, right? Um, FAFSA is only for students that are US citizens, right? Either naturalized or born in the United States, or if they are a green card holder, right? So a permanent legal resident, um, they also, or they can also be a refugee or an um, asylum holder. And so those are some of the eligibility for FAFSA. If that student is not an eligible citizen, they may be able to get state aid. And that's the second kind of grants that we have today. And that is through HISA, right? So HISA is the higher education um, state. Um, I forget what their full name is, but it's the higher education in the state of New Jersey, um, where they have something called the alternative aid application. And the alternative aid application is specifically for non-eligible citizens um, for FAFSA, right? So undocumented students, documented students, 
students who are not part of that eligible list, um, but there are also certain requirements for the state aid and we'll get through that in a minute. Um, also, the second part of HESA is something called NJ FAMS, which is for all students that are interested in getting state money to go to college in New Jersey, right? So if you're a New Jersey resident, which means that you've been living in New Jersey for a year or more, you may um, be eligible for um, a scholarship for going to community college, right? Um, and that money will come through NJ FAMS. And so through the website, um, this is a bit.ly that we created. It's called NJ Alternative Aid Application, right? Um, students can apply for uh, the state aid through there. We'll also go through that application today. And as I mentioned, state um, NJ FAMS is just a place that they can go um, to see all the state aid and scholarships. And again, like I said, if anyone has any questions, feel free to stop me, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, I really appreciate everyone being here. So I wanna also make sure that we're answering all these questions that you may have. Um, so specifically starting with FAFSA, FAFSA starts for free application for federal student aid. It opens every October. So every year that students are in college, they have to complete this form for the next year, right? So currently we're gonna be working on the 2022 to 2023 application. Um, again, this is money that students do not does not have to pay back. And it's all like I mentioned, it's only eligible and open for eligible citizens, non citizens, um, such as legal permanent residents, refugees and asylum holders. Um, something that's really important to note is that it doesn't matter if the parents or legal guardians are undocumented. What's important is the status of the student. The requirements that we have for FAFSA themselves is that we need some kind of proof of income, right? So we definitely need, there's no way around this. We need this parent's 2020 taxes or W-2s with the intention of applying for the 2020 taxes. If the student worked, we also need their 2020 taxes. If they did not work, it's not a requirement. Um, what we also need to make sure, right, is if the parent did not complete their 2020 taxes, we need to make sure that they're going to within the next few weeks, if they don't have their taxes or W-2 form or 1099 form, um, we cannot complete this process, right? We would need to think of scholarships or other ways. Some of that personal information that we might need is the parent's date of birth, also their social security number if they have that specifically again for the FAFSA, like I'm mentioning it, they're also their date of marriage or divorce, right? So if the parents are legally married in the United States, we need their date of marriage. If they're also legally divorced or separated, we also need those dates. The reason why is because um, depending on what we input into FAFSA depends on who's, which parent we will be putting the tax information from. So, for example, my parents are divorced. When I was completing my FAFSA, I had to complete it um, only based on the person who had legal custody of me. At that time, it was my mother. So I had to input my mom's tax information. I did not need to put my dad's tax information. Same question here, right? If the parents are married, we're obviously going to put the information for both of them. But if they're divorced or separated, then we will need to just put the one that the student um, has living and is uh, has custody of and is living with them. For the FAFSA, um, students will need to create a FAFSA ID. I have um, an example, we'll go through how to create that. And also the parent's FAFSA ID, if they have a social security number. If the parents does not have a social security number, that is not an issue here. It will not stop them from um, completing this application. It just means that we'll have to do something a little bit differently when they're um, verifying the information. And lastly, for the FAFSA, students will need um, to have a college list, have a maximum of 10 colleges that the students are interested in applying to. The FAFSA will not allow to put more than 10 colleges on the application. So they also will only have, um, you know, start thinking about what colleges they want to apply for. Um, later on, after submitting the application, students can always go ahead and change that, that list or add to that list if they did not put 10 but go ahead, right, and start thinking about which ones do they want to at least start applying for. So when creating a FAFSA ID, the students will need the social security number, 
the phone number and their personal email address, right? So it's really important that students use their personal email address and use their own personal phone number because they're going to need this um, FAST ID throughout their entire college experience. And so um, the same way that they create a student ID is the same way that they create the parents um, student um, FAST ID. So this is what the website looks like, right? Um, if you go back also really quickly, uh, we do have instructional videos on how to do this in both English and in Spanish. So those bit.ly's um, are active, right? So if you go ahead and just put in the bit.ly slash F-A-F-S-A and then either the E or S21, um, that will bring you to the video and you'll be able to review that um, as closely as you want. But this is what the website will look like, right? Um, you would go ahead and get started. And so do keep in mind that you cannot create the ID and then automatically start working on the FAFSA. They do need to verify your social security number and your parents' social security number. So, you know, make that maybe a day or two ahead of time um, before you start, you know, creating and submitting your FAFSA. It will bring you to an error message at the end and say, we have not verified your parents' identity. You are not able to submit this. So please do keep that in mind. But this is what the website looks like. And I believe you can still see my screen if I click this. And so once you click go ahead and get started, it's going to ask you for all of your personal information, right? This is where it's super important to make sure that there is no miss, um, misspelling or a wrong number in the social security number or in the date of birth because it's going to verify that information based on what you give it, right? So this is also a really good point to mention that if you have two last names, you can go ahead and use one or use both, whatever fits here, right? So just as an example, I'll fill this out for you just so I can show you the next um, page. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put, I'm not gonna submit this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put like a random fake social security number just because like I said, I'm not gonna submit this. The next information that you need is that you need to create a username and an email address, right? Keep this email address, this username and these passwords um, for your own information, right? Um, you need to create this on your own. Like I said, you need to create this at least a day ahead of time um, just so you're able to make sure that you're able to submit the FAFSA um, as soon as you're creating it. This is the same um, website that you're going to be doing for your parents as well. Like I said, I'm just going to do a random one, um, you know, just to show you what it looks like. Once you create this, realistically, um, it's not, um, this is the really the longest part, just the waiting aspect after creating your FAFSA ID. I didn't submit that. And like I said, this video that we also attached earlier through that bit.ly also goes through it more in depth than I am right now, which is why we're just rapidly going through this. Okay, great. And so after you finish creating um, your username, password, it's going to ask you a little bit more information about your mailing address and your phone number. And so for your mailing address and your phone number, you need to input the current mailing address where you are located, as well as the current phone number that you have, um, because it's going to ask you all this information. Again, if it is incorrect, you will not be able to change it later. So do please keep this in mind. Um, this is as far as I'm gonna go through with your FAST ID. Again, please make sure that you watch the video that I had added um, so you can see exactly um, all the steps to the end. And so once you finish creating your FAST ID, you're gonna go ahead and log into your account. Again, please go ahead and make sure that you, you know, at least take a day before starting your FAFSA, before logging in and creating it. So once you go ahead and log in, you're going to go ahead and click accept, and then you can start go ahead um, and creating your FAFSA ID.
your fast fast form, my apologies. One thing I do just want to remind everyone that's here is that if you don't know something, you need to make sure to ask, right? Do not guess your parents' social security number. Do not guess what their date of marriage is. Do not guess, um, right, what um, their proper um, spelling of their name or last name is, right? You need to make sure to get all this information correct because every single year you're going to be doing this over and over and over again for the next four years. Um, the Student Success Center are doing in-person appointments and also virtual appointments Monday through Wednesday, um, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., um, and so for an appointment, go ahead and scan the QR code um, and complete the form if you would like one with us. It would also be through Zoom. And so with us, um, we would be sitting through this entire application with you. Um, you know, so go ahead and feel free to let us know if you do have this. I'm also going to have my contact information in the end. Um, so you'll also be able to contact me with any questions you may have. But in your FAFSA form, it's going to ask you again, all of this information um, that you put earlier um, as a way to confirm that everything is correct. Again, making sure that all that spelling is correct, making sure that the social security number is correct, making sure all of that is correct. So for this year, the current year that we are in at this moment in time, you want to complete the 2022 to 2023 application. You do not want to complete the 2021 to 2022 application. The reason for that is that 2022 to 2023 will be for the incoming school year. It goes by academic year. So uh, the 2021 to 2022 are students that are currently in college. For any students that are seniors in college, we want to complete it for next year, right? So your screen is going to look a little bit more different than this one. So what we're going to go ahead, your um, 2022 will usually be right here, but I'm going to go ahead and click start new one. Here, you're going to click a four digit save code, right? So it can be four digits, it can be four letters, whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to go ahead and put four digits, click continue. And then once again, here, you're gonna put all your personal information, making sure everything is correct. And I'm gonna skip through all of this. And again, this is a part that if you are not a US citizen, this is, this is not for you, right? If you're not a US citizen, not a permanent legal resident, not a refugee, not an asylum holder, this application is not for you. I will go into the other application in just a moment. And so just as a reminder, right, um, for next year, you will have your high school diploma if you're a current senior. You will be going into your first a bachelor's degree, even if you're not sure which college you wanna go to, you're gonna put first bachelor's degree, as well as never attended college, right? If you're currently in high school, that means you've never attended college. And you always wanna put yes for work study. The reason for that is work study is an opportunity that they give students where they will pay them to work inside the college, right? So that can mean working inside the library part-time, um, working inside uh, admissions office as a receptionist part-time, right? It is an opportunity to connect in your school while getting paid for it. It's also not a guarantee. Um, this is also really important specifically for male students, right? If you are male, it's going to ask you if you, um, it's going to ask you if you uh, have registered for the selective service. And so if you have not registered for selective service, you definitely need to register for that. I'm not sure why it's not coming up now, but usually it will ask you, are you registered for selective service? Go ahead and click no. And then it will ask you if you want to be registered for selective service. Students, um, uh, male students over the age of 18 need to, it is a requirement for them to register for selective service. Um, this is specifically for individuals who were born male, right? Um, not their gender identity is male, but they were born male. All right, and if you're female, it will bypass it. You don't have to worry about that question. If you have a driver's license, you can go ahead and fill that information out. And if not, go ahead and click continue. 
Um, and then there are personal questions where they are asking you if you've ever been homeless, at risk of being homeless, or if you were in the foster care system. I answer those honestly. They need that demographic, um, so which is why you need to answer those honestly. Um, most of this information will not affect you in your eligibility. And so um, there's also going, and I'm going to skip through a few parts because I do want to get into the tax information. And so um, you do need to input up to 10 colleges, right? Um, you will be answering whether or not you are dependent. And once you're dependent, um, it's going to ask you which information are you going to be um, submitting, right? Will you be submitting a parent's information? One thing also to note is that if your parents do, does not have legal custody of you, right, if you live with an aunt, uncle, um, foster parent, right, they need to have legal custody of you um, through the courts for you to be able to submit their tax information. If your parent, you know, sent you to live with an aunt or an uncle, um, but they don't have legal custody of you, get in contact with me. That is a different situation that we need to um, work around. Um, we will figure that out together. But really quickly, once again, um, I want to talk about your taxes, right? So most students realistically haven't even looked at taxes before, but this is what they look like, right? You need to make sure that they are the 2020 taxes. For the 2022-2023 FAFSA, you cannot use the 2019 taxes um, unless under certain circumstances, right? Um, if parents have not submitted the 2020 taxes yet, but have the intentions to, then that's a situation where we can use the 2019 taxes. But again, um, that's a conversation that you need to, you know, you should always check in with me. Um, I am available for call or texting at any point, and I will have my number in the end. Um, but some other things that you do need to look out for, right, is um, what year are these taxes, but also is it a 10 at 40, right, and usually it is also on the top left hand corner, but you can't see it here, so you can always check it by on the bottom right hand corner by it saying form 1040. Um, these are some taxes, right, if you've never seen them before. It has all the information that you need for FAFSA. The FAFSA will tell you exactly what line to find all the information. So normally, right, it's going to ask you, um, uh, did your parents complete the FAFSA form? Yes, I already, I mean, sorry, um, did your parents complete their taxes? Yes, you already completed them. Okay, great. What form did they have? Almost most, you know, the norm for parents is that they have a 1040. So go ahead and put 1040, and then it's going to ask for a filing um, status, right? What that means is over here on the top, right under 2020, you can go ahead and see single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household or qualifying widower, right? That is the information that you're going to be inputting based on what your family or your parents have. In my case, this taxes show married filing jointly. And so again, in the FAFSA, we'll tell you exactly what it is that you are looking for, um, which line to go to, which lines to add up to, which is why, you know, sometimes it does get a little bit confusing. So again, please reach out to us if you would like an appointment to make sure that you're not completing this wrong. So some more um, tips that I definitely need everyone to make sure that they know um, is that, um, some parents have different pages on their taxes, right? Um, so this case, we have a schedule three. Schedule ones exist, schedule twos exist, schedule, um, I believe it's 8813 exists, right? Um, E1C, right? So there are a whole bunch of different numbers that are attached to the taxes. It is really important for you to be able to identify them and be like, okay, my parents has a schedule three, my parents have a schedule one, whatever the issue may be. Um, that way, when it's asking you for this information, you know what is available and what isn't. Some parents don't have a, a schedule one and that is totally fine, right? When you're inputting zeros into the FAFSA, that does not mean anything good or bad. It just means that's the information that you have available. Um, so I did just want to take a second to see if anyone have any, had any questions about the FAFSA, right? Um, really quickly before I take any questions is that at the end 
of the FAFSA form. If the students or the parents have social security numbers, um, it will be fairly simple that it will just require an electronic signature. If that is not available and the, the parents does not have um, a social security number, the students will have to print it out and mail it physically, right? Again, it does not affect them. It will not you know, take away anything from them. It will just look a little bit differently. And just so everyone can see, um, this is what it will look like. I think I'm still sharing. Ashley, go ahead and let me know if you guys can see um, the signature page that I'm sharing. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm hoping that you all can still see my screen. Um, and so, can you still see it? Yep. Perfect, okay, great. So this is what a signature page looks like, right? If a parent is undocumented, um, we would be putting all zeros into the FAFSA application and the student will just print it out. The parent will physically sign it, date it and mail it, right? They would mail it to this address and that is it, right? Like I said, it will not stop them in this process. It's just an additional step that students will have to do. Um, and that's really it for the FAFSA, right? Um, it's a lot of information. It takes about an hour, an hour and a half to submit. Um, so do take about an hour, even two hours um, to submit this, right? If it's an appointment with us, it takes around an hour, an hour and 15 minutes um, if you already come with all your documents and the FAFSA ID. Um, okay, so does anyone have any questions about the FAFSA before we go on to um, the HISA? or alternative aid application. Okay, so seeing no questions. Um, so right, so the alternative to FAFSA is the alternative aid application, right? So the alternative aid application is meant for New Jersey residents, right? Which means that they've been living in New Jersey for at least a year and are going to attend or are going to apply for New Jersey universities, right? So that can mean Union County College, Bergen County College, Hudson County College, Rutgers, Kane University, Princeton University, any school that is located within New Jersey. Um, the, the alternative aid application is also open to any students that are documented, right? Which means that they are DACA recipients they're on undocumented, or that means that they're just uneligible or ineligible for FAFSA, right? So that just means that they're not one of the qualifying individuals for FAFSA. Um, this is also money that you do not have to pay back. And once again, it does not matter if the parents are undocumented or um, legal guardians are undocumented. Um, the requirements for the um, alternative aid application is that they did have to attend at least three years of um, high school, right? They have to have attended at least three years, including their senior year. That means that they had to have arrived in, the, in New Jersey, not just the United States, but in New Jersey, at least in 2019. Um, and also that they're obviously going to graduate a New Jersey high school and will be attending or applying for a New Jersey college. The income or requirements are almost exactly the same um, as to the FAFSA, right? So proof of income is that the parents need to have at least their 2020 taxes or W-2s or have the intention of applying for um, their 2020 taxes. Um, the situation unfortunately happens a lot, right? Just reiterating what I mentioned is that if the parents don't have that 2020 taxes or didn't work during 2020, we need some kind of proof of what their income was. And if they don't have it, again, unfortunately, they cannot apply um, for their HISA or the alternative aid application. If the student applied, um, then we would also, you know, be using their taxes as proof of income. Um, but if they didn't, again, it's not a requirement. We would just bypass that information. Some personal information that we do need for the alternative aid application is, again, the parent's date of birth, the date of marriage, divorce, or separation, 
the student's ITIN number if they do have it available, right? If people, um, just in case don't know that, an ITIN number is the identifying tax um, number that individuals can get from the IRS, as well as the ITIN number for their parents. If the parents or the students don't have an ITIN number, more than likely the students don't have an ITIN number, um, we can put all zero, so it's not an issue. Um, and that's, you know, not a problem here. Um, the account that the student need to, needs to create is a New Jersey Dreamers account, right? So that is the website that I'll be showing in just a moment. Um, and the website that I um, showed uh, previously, right? So that bit.ly um, slash AAA um, PP, right? Um, as well as a New Jersey FAMS account, right? Which is something I did not talk about earlier, but also did include the link earlier. So they also, for the alternative aid application, need to also have the college list. And the college list, again, needs to have a maximum of 10 colleges that they're interested in applying to. Unlike FAFSA, students right now cannot go in after they submit um, to change that college list. So they can put as many colleges up to 10 that they want that they're interested in applying for. They do not need to apply for those colleges, right? So let's say they apply, they input Union County College, um, but they end up not applying for it. That's not an issue, not a problem. We would rather that situation than, than them um, not putting the college that they really wanna go to. For any changes that they wanna make um, later on, they would need to call HESA directly. So just to avoid that, start thinking about the colleges that they wanna apply for. Again, same reminders, right? If the student does not know what the date of birth of their parent is, they need to make sure. They cannot estimate that. They cannot guess it, right? Um, if they have any doubt about what their um, IT number is, they need to make sure or not input it at all, right? This information is super, super crucial that it will affect whether or not they actually get this aid. Um, you know, so rather than guessing it, they need to confirm with the parent or the guardian what the actual numbers or lettering or spelling is. Again, these applications are super sensitive, so students need help with this. Um, we are available for in-person appointments in Elizabeth um, or, you know, virtual appointments via Zoom um, Wednesday through Friday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And also feel free to scan the QR code and complete the form to let us know that you're interested in an appointment. And if you have any questions, like I said earlier, I will be um, dropping my phone number um, at the end. So you're able to go ahead and call me, text me with any information or questions you may have. This is what the New Jersey Dreamers looks like, right? Um, the application is through HESA, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and so I will be showing you the same registration process that I did for FAFSA. And this is what it looks like, right? Um, we're gonna go ahead and click here now. You're gonna go ahead and create a new um, user, right? All students that are undocumented, documented, or ineligible for FAFSA are gonna answer all these questions honestly, right? Um, if you did not attend uh, high school for three years or more, you're, you have to put no, right? But once you put no, unfortunately, that means that you are not eligible. You need to qualify all of these points to be able to register for the alternative aid application, right? So we're gonna put yes, if you arrive before 2019, yes, that you are going to graduate from uh, New Jersey high school, and then we're always going to put yes for number three, right? Um, what this means is that you need to have a consultation with um, a lawyer just to make sure that you, if and when, hopefully you are able for a legal status. That means that you will be applying for it. Um, it just means that you will not choose to stay undocumented if you have the opportunity to apply, right? And you can always do a consultation through us as long as you fill out your alternative aid application um, with us. And then obviously, yes, you apply, you plan on attending and applying for a college in New Jersey. Your citizenship status should always be not a citizen or eligible non-citizen if you are not a US citizen or eligible non-citizen, right? Um, again, this application is not for US citizens. This application is not for um, legal permanent residents. It's not for refugees 
or asylum holders. This is only for undocumented folks or students who do not qualify for FAFSA. You're gonna go ahead and click submit and then you can input all of the information that you have, right? First name, last name, date of birth. If you have a social security number, right? So for example, DACA recipients do have a social security number. You can go ahead and input that here and then re-input that here. Also, if you don't have a social security number, but you have an ITIN number, you can go ahead and input that here. If you do not have either, do not put zeros, leave it completely blank, right? Do not worry about the section, just leave it blank. They will give you a number. Um, skip the HISA customer ID number because you do not have one yet. So go ahead and skip that. And then go ahead and input um, an email address, user ID, and password. Uh, once you complete that, you will click submit. It will send you a link via email to activate your account. Once you're finishing activating your account, you can immediately start logging in. Once you log in, you will go ahead and click on apply for New Jersey Alternative Financial Aid application. Once you click on that, once again, same thing like we talked about for the FAFSA, you're going to go ahead and click on the 2022-2023 application. Do not worry about the first one. We need the second one. Go ahead and click continue. And then you're going to input all of this information, right? Unlike the FAFSA, once you submit it, that's it. There are no longer any changes that you can um, submit, right? So you need to make sure that all the information is correct. It's true and it's spelled correctly. Um, this form looks a little bit different, but it's basically asking all the same information, right? Your mailing address, the current one that you're living at, social security number, permanent phone number, um, driver's license number, if you have one, and if not, no worries. Email address, um, what your marital status is, um, Remember, so anytime that it is saying yours, it means the students. Um, anytime it's asking about the parent's information, it will say parent or parents, right? So do keep that in mind as you are submitting this information. So when it's asking you what your marital status is as of today, it is asking for the student, not the parents. And so really quickly going back to the earlier conversation that we had, the same information and that you needed for the FAFSA regarding the taxes will be the same thing for the alternative aid. You need to have a 2020 taxes. You need to have a 1040 if available. You need to make sure that you are following all the instructions on which lines to input regarding the tax number information. Um, for both applications, they will also be asking you um, on um, what the, uh, if you have a checkings or savings account, approximately how much money is in there. If you own any property, how much is the value, not including the home that you live in. Um, if you own any businesses, what is the amount, um, the value of it, right? So read these questions carefully. Make sure that you are filling out this information again, totally, completely accurately. Uh, going back to the alternative aid application, um, once you finish filling out all this application, um, it will take you to basically the same information, asking about your parents, what their marital status is, asking for their tax information, your tax information, which colleges you're going to be interested in applying for. Again, alternative aid application is only for New Jersey colleges. You cannot input NYU, right, the New York University, you cannot put in um, any colleges that is not found in the state of New Jersey. This money will only be used for in New Jersey schools, right, in state schools. Um, and so once you get to the end, unlike the FAFSA, right, um, the alternative aid application will only ask you to like physically type in your full name, type in your parents' full name, submit it, and you are done, right? So once again, if you have any questions about how to fill this out, go ahead and let me know. Um, the process and information for both is essentially the same, um, but it is really important for you to, um, you know, make sure that everything is spelled correctly. So one last thing before we add any questions, 
is something called NJFAMS. So NJFAMS is the account that for state students, right? So students that are going to in-state school, they will be able to see about how much money they're giving them for the schools, right? So if you're going to Union County College, you are going to Rutgers, you are going to um, any college in the state of New Jersey, you will be seeing it here. So you can go ahead and create a student login put in all that information. If you have a social security number, um, you can input it, but if you do not, go ahead and do not put it, right? Um, I'm going to go back, going to log in, and this is what you're going to see, right? You're gonna go ahead and put in, you know, check your to-do list, right? If there's anything that they ask you to do, such as um, the verification, right? Tax transcripts, um, that's a different conversation, right? It will be here. But you will also be able to see about how much money they're going to give you, right, based on um, how, you know, what school you're going to. So in this case, this student um, applied to Rutgers um, for last year, right, and they got $5,000 um, for spring through this grant, right? So they would be able to receive that money and not have to pay it back. Um, right, and so this is the way that it's broken down based on fall and spring. So if you have any questions, right, like I said, please let me know. Um, NJ FAMS, Alternative Aid Application, and FAFSA are two, three very different applications. NJ FAM is for all students that are interested in going to a state college. So regardless if you're documented or undocumented applying for FAFSA or for the alternative aid, you need to create an NJ FAMS account um, to be able to see how much money they're gonna give you for the in-state school. Um, and as I mentioned, right, um, this is my phone number. Um, and also my email address. So if you have an, any questions um, regarding, um, you know, how to complete the, these applications, if you would like to make an appointment so we can complete them together. Um, if you have any doubts about your eligibility, feel free to call me, text me, um, you know, email us um, so you can get an appointment. Um, so feel free, like I said, to reach out. Like this is a safe space, an open space. Um, we are available Monday through Friday, anytime that you may need us. Um, does anyone have any questions? You can go ahead and unmute yourselves to ask Stephanie questions. Okay, there's a question that says, Afecta para FASFA si está trabajando. Um, I'm going to ask this question or answer it in Spanish. Um, pues mi pregunta para ustedes, um, si afecta la FASO, si está trabajando. Um, si la, el estudiante está trabajando, no, ¿verdad? Nada más necesita los taxes si es que cualifica para aplicar para sus taxes. Um, y si es que no haga taxes, ¿verdad? Porque no, um, no es requerido que haga los taxes si hace menor de um, 10 mil dólares al año, no le va a afectar, nada más tenemos que poner pues esa información. All right, so question was, um, does it affect the FAFSA if the student is working? Um, answer is no, as long as right we input that information for them. Um, you know, it's not required for students to um, do their taxes if it's less than $10,000. So if they have their taxes, we'll input it, and if not, it's not a big deal. Any other questions? Yes, so I have a question. Will Make the Road be offering their FAFSA application sessions where they partner up and have someone help students fill out applications in the evening hours this year? Yeah, we definitely can. Yeah, we can. Um, we can always do an extended hours um, towards the evening of completing um, the FAFSA, right? So we can do a clinic, um, right? We, like I mentioned, we are available in person on Tuesdays in Elizabeth, and if not virtually, we can help students one on one. Does that answer your question, Ashley? It does. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else have any other questions?
So what is the last possible day then to have FAFSA applications submitted? So that's a great question. So the last day um, that we recommend students to complete their FAFSA um, is really like the day before school, right? Um, the FAFSA does not end um, until I believe it's the August after it, right? So the 2022-2023 is not going to end until September of 2023. Um, but right, it takes three to five weeks for the for it to process. So realistically, students need to submit this at least a month before going to school, right? Um, which it goes into the conversation of like, don't close off opportunities for yourself, right? The earlier that you submit the FAFSA, so even now, between now and January, the better your op uh, opportunity is to receive more federal or state aid. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, of course. Any other questions? Alguna otra pregunta? Guys, definitely don't be shy. This is all very important information. And if you think of questions after the session ends, please reach out to Stephanie at the email address that she's providing you, college ambassadors at maketheroadnewjersey.org. Stephanie is a wealth of knowledge and will absolutely be able to help you through all of the steps of this process. Definitely. And also to add there, right, like your situation may be really unique. Um, there's only so much that I can cover in an hour. So, you know, please don't, you know, feel embarrassed or feel scared about anything. Um, any conversations that we may have, right? Um, we've seen it all. I've seen it all. Um, so I would rather answer your question now and, you know, let us figure out if you're eligible for federal aid, right? Because again, this is free money for you to go to college, right? You shouldn't, you know, take all the money you can because college is expensive. Any other questions? Okay. All right, everyone, if there are no other questions, I want to say thank you again to Stephanie Benita Vasquez from Make the Road, New Jersey, on behalf of the Jersey City Community Public Library College and Career Readiness Department. Thank you so much for being with us, Stephanie. Thank you so much for everyone for having me here. Um, I'm really glad to be here, too. And like I said, please reach out.